Hi everybody, this is Spring, the Fiber Enthusiast, coming to you with another tatting tutorial. Today's tatting tutorial is going to be on this Christmas tree earring. I chose to go with a post for the top, so it's not as long as if you used a fish hook style earring. Your choice of earring is up to you, whichever you like. Sorry, I bumped the camera. <clears throat> but as you can see, there's beads on it to represent some ornaments. And again, that's all up to you. So, would you like to make this? If so, hang in there and we'll get started shortly. Okay, so what will we need to make those? Let's get started. First off, you're gonna need some type of earring. I chose a post only because the Christmas tree is so long. So I decided to go with a post earring attachment and a small jumper, jump ring to go from the post to the top of the star on the Christmas tree. So I'm gonna set them aside because that'll be the last thing we need. Some type of needle threader, if you so desire. You'll also need about 22, give or take, probably grab a couple of extra just in case. Some of these seed beads or uh, 6.0 beads have a problem there the insides aren't always the same so i usually grab the handful and just take one as it fits on the end of my crochet hook and as you can see it's a very 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 tiny hook but your six number six bead should fit over the end of your crochet hook so you'll need the crochet hook and 22 beads that will fit across that crochet hook. Now, you will not thread them onto your thread. We will be adding them as we go with the crochet hook. They are going on top of the picots. So you will actually grab the put the bead on the hook, grab the pico with it, and then slide this down over the top of the pico. And it'll be 11 beads per earring. So your crochet hook and your 6.0 beads. You will also need out of your tatting needle stash the needle that goes with your number 10 thread which is a number 5. So not not the biggest one, the one down just down from it out of your tatting needle stash. You'll also need a pair of scissors and your jewelry pliers. Um, again, mine are snap-on. I have a whole set here that I had got for Christmas quite some time ago, but I just use the needle nose out of it most of the time. So jewelry pliers, whichever of your choice. You will also need some thread. I'm using today for today's tutorial, Aunt Lydia's Classic Number 10. So it's a number 10 thread. It's a mercerized cotton, 100%. I'm also using a little bit of this for the star on top. And uh, let's see, it's a metallic. It's a 86% uh, mercerized cotton and 14% metallic yarn, which you can see the gold strand running through it. But it's also, uh, let's see if it says here. It says that it was made in India. I was just looking to see if it says that it's a number 10. It is basically, it is the same size as a number 10. Um, I'll hold it up next to a 10. It's just a hair bigger, and mainly because that it, 
that metallic in there, it's making it a little bit bigger, but not much. So those are the, the two threads that I'm using. Now, as far as the beads, I'm using white. You can replace them with any color bead you like or multicolored beads. So that way it's like different colored ornaments. That's what the beads are representing is an ornament in the on the Christmas tree itself. And again, you can use a different color than green. I just happen to be using green for the Christmas tree. I have made Christmas trees in the past that I use Christmas thread where it's red, green, and white. And then I add this gold star uh, to the top. And you can do just a, a gold or a yellow out of your number 10 thread. It doesn't have to have the metallic in it. It just, this is what I'm using for this tutorial and what you see in you know, the earrings. So you can use whichever, you know, colors you want, make, make them however you want to make them and be as creative as you wanna be. And now you don't have to make these earrings either. You can make them bigger just by adding extra rings and arches across the way and then going, you know, and narrowing it as you go. So that just kind of depends on you and what you want. You can turn it into an ornament. You can leave it the same size and make it an ornament. You can make it bigger and make that an ornament. It's completely and entirely up to you what you choose to do with this earring pattern. Um, it's kind of multifunctional, <laughs> if you will. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread my needle with the green. And each row you cut off, so in your end and start uh, a new row. So you don't need a whole bunch of tail for this. I'm gonna get these beads out of the way so that way they don't run away on me. There we go. Okay. I would say give yourself a good uh, 12 inches of tail to start with. All right. So this is how this pattern will go for these earrings. Get about 12 inches of tail. Place your needle over your thread on your finger. Let's get started with three double stitches. If you need to learn how to do the double stitches, um, picos, how to do the arches, I do have videos on them in my tatting tutorials. Oops. Okay, so we're gonna start with three double stitches. One pico, three double stitches. One pico, three double stitches. One more pico and three more double stitches. So that is what your rings will be, is three double stitches, pico, three double stitches, pico, three double stitches, pico, three double stitches. Hold your work, grab, since this is a ring, we're gonna grab a hold of this tail so that way we don't pull it through until we're ready. Insert your needle from the back side of the loop that you reserved. Hang on, we're catching too many here. All right, insert your tail from the back side. Cinch that loop down. Okay. 
and close to form a ring. Okay, make sure that your rings are not too tight. Turn the page, turn your work over just like you're turning a page. <coughs> Excuse me. Insert your needle from the back side of that teardrop and place a knot. Placing your needle on top of the knot on top of your index finger, we are going to start our arch. Our arch is going to consist of four double stitches, one pico, and four double stitches. Pico, four more double stitches. And you want your picos to be long enough that you can put one of these beads on it. So you might make them just a hair bigger than you normally do if you make your picos kind of on the smaller side. Just like that. And again, you're gonna turn the page and bring your needle up through the back of that teardrop. Place a knot. And now here's where the fun begins. We're gonna connect to this very first Pico. Let me zoom in a little bit. So we're gonna do three double stitches And generally, we would just stick our needle through and pick the thread up, right, to do a join. But it's not the case when you're working with the beads in this manner. So we're gonna place a bead on our crochet hook. Go through from the front side of your pico, hooking that pico and sliding that bead down onto your pico. Okay, just like that. Then you're going to grab your thread from your working ball of yarn or your working ball of thread and pull up a loop through that, through that bead through that pico, through, that's coming through the end of the bead there. You're gonna pull up a loop and then place that loop over on top of your needle. Just like that, slide the work down so it doesn't jump off. And then just tighten it up and you just gotta play with it a little bit. Till it meets up with the rest of your work. So it's good and good and as snug as it's going to get to the rest of those double stitches. Now you're going to add three more double stitches. Pico. Three double stitches. Pico and three more double stitches. We're going to do this until we have a total of four rings and three arches. Just like that. Turn your work just like you're turning a page in a book. Coming from the back side of this teardrop, place a knot. Oops. 
didn't go through it. There we are. Okay, place a knot. Now we're gonna make another arch, which is four double stitches, Pico, four double stitches. These picots on top of your arches, we are going to be connecting with beads. So again, make sure that you've left enough room for your bead. Okay, turn the page and place a knot. We'll go ahead and do another ring together. Place your needle on top of your knot, on top of your index finger, and do three double stitches. Okay. Now we're gonna connect with another bead. So again, put your bead on your little itty bitty crochet hook. Reach through that side pico. It is a little fiddly and it takes a little bit of getting used to, but once you get the hang of it, it, it goes a little bit smoother. Pull that thread through your Pico. And this is definitely not the easiest thing to do on camera. There we go, we got it. And we're pulling our thread through from the front. We're reaching through the front of the Pico, grabbing our thread and pulling it through. Place that loop on your needle. And again, cinch it down until it meets up with your last double stitch you made. Now we're gonna place three more double stitches, Pico, three double stitches, Pico, three double stitches. Okay. Now this is a ring, let's reserve that loop so that way it doesn't disappear. From the back of your loop, bring your needle through, cinch it down, and close to form a ring. Turn your work over, place a knot. I'm gonna make another arch. Placing your needle on top of your knot, four double stitches, Pico, four double stitches. Okay, pull your tail through to form that arch. Turn your work over. Coming from the back side, send your needle through that loop and make a knot. And we're gonna do our last ring together, placing your needle on your knot on top of your index finger, we will start with three double stitches. We're gonna join with a bead to our Pico. So from the front side of the work, we are going to insert our hook through the Pico Slide the bead down off of our hook onto the Pico. Okay. 
reaching through and grabbing that thread and pulling it up through the pico. Place the loop you just pulled up over the top of your needle and then cinch it down to the last double stitch you made. And you cinch it down just by pulling on the thread that you have coming from your working ball of thread. Now we're gonna finish the ring. Three double stitches, pico. Three double stitches, pico. Three double stitches. Reserve the loop from your tail so that way you can come from the back side of that loop with your needle and cinch it down and then close to form a ring. Turn your work over and now we're going to place a good knot because we're going to go ahead and sew in the ends here. This is the first row, the bottom of the tree is complete. So I'm gonna place a pretty good knot here just to make sure that it doesn't come undone. And then I will sew in my ends. Start with this one that's on the needle with the tail thread. Work the needle down through your double stitches. Pull it tight. Snip off the excess. Move it around so that tail disappears up into the work. And now we'll do the other side. I usually cut this side a little bit shorter because I go ahead and stick my needle into those double stitches most of the time. Just go ahead and stick it all the way down in through. All the way to the eye. Then you can take your needle threader, stick it through the eye of your needle and take that shorter tail that you cut off. Place it in there and pull it through. That way that you're not wasting a bunch of thread Pull your needle and tail through, it's good and tight. Cut off the excess, don't cut your work. And then shift it around so that way it's good and tucked in that ring. Okay, so now we're gonna start the next row. The next row, will we, we will be adding basically two beads each time we make a ring after our first ring. Our first ring, we're only adding one bead. Okay, let me get thread through my needle and we will start again. Okay, so we're gonna start with our, our first ring. You'll need le a little bit less of a tail than you had the first time because we're going to be only three rings and two arches. So let's get started. Place your needle over your thread onto your index finger and start with three double stitches, one pico, three double stitches. Okay, so now we're gonna connect to this very first arch on your right-hand side of your work. 
we're going to connect to it with a bead just as we had been doing below. We're going to do the same thing with this arch. Going from the front side of your work through to the back, pick up that pico and drop your bead down on it. Reach through and grab your thread, your working thread, and pull up a loop through that pico that you pulled through the through the bead. I'm sorry, I am getting out of camera here. Pull up a loop, place the loop on top of the needle, and now we are going to cinch it down to our double stitches. Good and tight. Now we're going to finish our ring with another three double stitches, Pico, three double stitches. Reserve your loop, coming from the back side of your loop, insert your needle and cinch it down, close to form a ring. Turn the page, turn your work over. From the back to the front, insert your needle through that little teardrop you made and place a knot. Now we're going to make an arch just the same as the arches below. Four double stitches, Pico, four double stitches. Draw your tail through. Turn your work over like you're turning a page, inserting your needle from back to front through your little teardrop, place a knot. Now here is where we're going to be adding two beads. We will add on our first pico and the second pico. So three double stitches, Okay, there's our three double stitches. Now we're gonna come down here to this pico on the side of our previous ring. Get a bead. Place the bead onto your pico. Grab your working thread, pull up a loop through that bead, through the pico at the top of the bead, place the loop onto your needle, cinch it down to your last double stitch you made, add three more double stitches, and now we're going to do it again. We're gonna add to the second arch. So get yourself another bead. Put that bead on the next arch, the pico of the next arch. Reaching through, grabbing that thread, pulling it through the pico. Placing the loop that you just pulled through onto your needle. And cinch it down to meet up with the last double stitch you made. Okay. 
missing a thread here. Okay, I gotta do that again. When I pulled it up through, I missed part of my thread. There we go. Now we got it. Wasn't wanting to cinch down because I was missing part of my thread. So you gotta be careful, but you can get it. There we go. Now we're cooking with salt and pepper. Okay, three double stitches, Pico, three double stitches. And now this is a ring, so we're going to reserve that little loop. Cinch it down and close to form a ring. Turn your work over and place a knot. Now we're gonna do our last arch of this row. Four double stitches, Pico, four double stitches. Okay, slide your work through, your tail through, turn the page, and place a knot. Okay, let's do the last ring. Again, the last ring we are going to connect with a bead here and a bead on top of this arch from the previous row. So let's start with three double stitches. Get another bead, place the bead on the side of that last ring you made, on the pico on the side. Reach through, grab your working thread and pull up a loop. Place that loop on top of your needle. Slide your work down. All right, cinch that bead up close to the last double stitch that you made. Three double stitches. And now we're gonna add our last bead of this row onto the top of the arch from the previous row. Grab your work, your working thread there, and pull up a loop through your needle, or through your pico, sorry. Place the loop onto your needle. And cinch it down. to your last double stitch. Add three more double stitches, Pico three more double stitches to finish this ring. Okay. And place a good knot and then sew in your ends for this row and we will start the next row I'm gonna go ahead and sew my ends in off camera and I will be back to start the next row okie dokie 
We are back. We will now be doing two rings and one arch. So again, about the same amount that of thread, tail thread that you had for the last one. Let's go ahead and start with a ring. Three double stitches. Pico, three double stitches. And now we're gonna connect with a bead on top of this arch from the previous row. Get yourself a bead and place it on that pico. Reach through and grab your working thread and pull up a loop. Placing that loop on your needle and cinching it down till your bead meets up with the last double stitch you made. Three more double stitches. Pico, three more double stitches. Okay, close up and form a ring. Turn your work over. Place a knot. This is our last arch. We will not be adding any picots. So it will be a total of eight double stitches. eight double stitches, pull your tail thread through, turn your work, place a knot, okay, we're going to do the last ring here, attaching the last two beads, three double stitches, bead on this side pico here. Pull your working thread through that pico. Place the loop that you pulled up through the pico onto your needle and cinch it down. Three more double stitches. And let's place our last bead on top of this arch from the previous row. Okay, good and cinched up. Now we're gonna do three more double stitches, pico, three more double stitches. Okay, 
And that will finish up this ring. And we will add the star. Here we go, close to form a ring. And let's go ahead and put a good knot in it and then sew in your ends. And once I've sewed in my ends, I will meet back up with you and we will do the star. Okay, because it's just one ring with some really large picos, you don't need a lot of tail thread. But what you're going to do is from the center between these eight stitches. So you'll count over one, two, three, four. And between the two sets of four double stitches, you're going to insert your needle from back to front and pull yourself a little tail through. Place a knot on top just to kind of secure it there and give yourself something good and solid to work on. Place your needle on top of the knot, one double stitch and this is your pattern it all the way around. We're gonna have five picots. So one pico. And how I like to do it is the first one is somewhat small. The second one I make a little bit bigger. The third one I make a lot bigger. See if I can show you here. There. Now the next one will be the same size as this middle one and the last one will be the same size as our first one we made. Okay, and now we're just gonna pull through and form a ring. So reserve that working thread over here so it doesn't disappear in your work. Place your needle into it from back to front and cinch down and then close to form a ring. Turn your work over and place a knot And then I like to sew my ends in down to that last arch you made. That way it's a little bit more sturdy by sewing it into the arch below versus just sewing it into the actual ring itself. There's not much there to sew into as far as the ring. Now it takes a little bit of doing and make sure you don't get your star all caught up in it. especially if you're using a thread like this with the metallic on it. That metallic likes to hang up on everything, so. And just pull it through and clip it off and do the same thing to the other side of the arch. That just kind of gives it a little bit more stability And then we'll add the earring to the top, get all these picos straightened out. We'll add the earring to the top. I'm gonna go ahead and clip away 
from my ball of thread. And sew this last in, in off of camera. Okay, now we'll go ahead and get our jewelry pliers and our jump ring and the post or earring of choice. I'm gonna go ahead and split this jump ring open just a little bit. Okay. Place my jewelry on it. And at the middle pico here, the top of the star, I'm going to place that onto my jump ring also. Then just kind of hold them together while I pinch this jump ring closed, being careful not to pinch my fingers while doing it. Now we got it. And then just place it on your blocking board and starch it good. Pulling out and pinning. <clears throat> Pulling out and pinning your picos and shaping it onto your blocking board. Now, to make this bigger, you would just add, continue to add another arch and another ring. And that would make it five across the bottom, four across the second row, three across, two across. You would actually end up adding another row in length and width. So that's how you would make a tree for a larger project. You would just continue to add your arches and your rings. And then if you're adding beads, like we did here for the earring, you just keep adding the beads in the same places as we did here. So that's it for this tutorial on the Christmas tree earrings. If you enjoyed this tutorial please give me a thumbs up and comment down below if you make this project or any other project and you'd like to show me you can come over to my Facebook group it is in the description box below as well as the banner on my home page you can send it to me in email or also tag me in it in Instagram I would love and enjoy to see your work. Thank you for watching. Be blessed and be a blessing. Bye, guys.